top 10 matchup in high school boys basketball. Tonight in Class 4A, the number one team in the State Park Center takes on number eight, Osseo. From Osseo High School, John Jacobson along with Ryan Iverson. And Ryan, excited to be part of uh, high school basketball as we start the 2022 part of the calendar. Yep. Park Center has been everything is advertised yeah. coming into the season well, and so far this year. They are the complete deal, John. They've taken on you know some of the best teams in the state. Great defense, great offense, good balance. They're athletic. They can shoot. They can do everything. And we're right in the middle of the Park Center student section here. Great crowd on a Friday night. This is uh, electric. This is what we love to do. Osseo comes in at 6-3, and three, but they've played some really yeah. good teams. Their three losses all to ranked teams yeah. like themselves. Yeah, and, and played really close against Hopkins. They just beat a really good Minnetonka team. So they're playing really well, and, and they have a lot of confidence. And I'll tell you what, we say it every year, but Coach Tim Tyson's one of the best in the business. He's been doing it a long time. He knows how to get his kids ready for big games. And these two teams, they know each other. The kids are friends. They're you know, competing against each other year-round. So he's going to have his kids ready to go in, in a great atmosphere tonight. Let's look at our key players, starting with Park Center, Braden Carrington, one of the top players in the state of Minnesota. He'll be a Golden Gopher yep. next year. Well, every Gopher fan in the state should be thrilled with that because he is as smooth of a basketball player as you're going to find. He does everything really, really well. He's unselfish. I almost want to see him be a little bit more selfish because he's a great scorer, averaging 21 points, but he will get his teammates involved. He will get that rebound. He will make plays. He'll do whatever it takes for his team to win. Uh, and like I said, just smooth, really fun to watch. Osseo's really got a balanced scoring yep. attack. Their second leading scorer this year and second leading scorer a year ago, Bernard Amoria, yep. three-year varsity player and a really fun player to watch. Well, he is, and you see that averaging 15 points a game, but almost 50% from the three-point line. And so one of the things when you play Park Center, they're so tenacious defensively, you got to handle the rock. You can't turn it over. And when you get open looks, you got to be able to knock them down. So watching Amoria tonight, see how he handles the pressure and see if he can be aggressive and get going because I think scoring is going to be a key tonight for, for you know, if Osseo is going to have a shot to win this game. These teams split their regular season meetings a year ago. Park Center in the series, Ryan, has won six of the last seven. They're definitely the favorite tonight. What does Osseo need to do to, yeah. to flip the script tonight? It just take care of the ball. If you can take care of the ball and get good possessions, Park Center is so aggressive defensively, you can get them into foul trouble. So, but you got to be smart when you play Park Center. When they can get out and transition and get some dunks and, and you can kind of feel that electricity, those easy baskets. No one in the state's going to be able to, to hang with them or, or beat them. And, and you got to force Braden Carrington to make tough shots and, and force him to take contested threes. If he's able to get to the rim where he's so long and athletic and smooth, game over. Great rivalry game and look forward to this one in just a few minutes here at Osseo High School. It's Park Center in Osseo. Boys basketball next on CTX. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is now available on Roku and Apple TV. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including daily newscasts and full sporting events. To find the app, go to the store and search CCX and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. Now available on Roku and Apple TV. Cold night out at Osseo, but inside the gym, we're looking forward to a red hot basketball game between the Park Center Pirates and the Osseo Orioles. John Jacobson with Ryan Iverson. Good crowd on hand tonight for this one between the Pirates and the Orioles. You will. We talked about this before. We didn't have many fans at all a year ago, so good to see uh, this many people out tonight. Oh, it's, it's electric. There was a line to get in. There were no parking spots to be had, and all I could think when I was walking in, John, is I'm glad we're indoors tonight. Right. <laughs> you wanted to do the game outside. So yeah. Set a table out there. <laughs> Starters being introduced, and let's look at the starting five for each of these teams. Starting with the Pirates, 7-0 on the season. Their forwards, James Spencer, a 6'6 senior, and J.J. Ware, a 6'6 junior. Braden Carrington, a 6'5 senior. 
Cody Pennebaker, a 6'5 senior, and Leo Torber, a 6'4 senior, are the guards. For Osseo, 6-3 on the season. They're forwards. Lewis Carter, a 6'4 senior. Trey Smith, a 6'5 junior. Their center is blessed by Barra Haga. He is a 6'9 senior. And then their guards, very experienced backcourt. Bernard Amoria, 6'1 senior. And Tyrese Waits, a 6'1 senior. Waits, the leading scorer on the team. Yeah, and they've been playing since, you know, ninth graders, whether it was a combo of JV and varsity. And talking to Coach Tyson, he just said this is their time. They're experienced, they're skilled, they're tough. You know, one thing to keep in mind, too, is they're six foot and six foot one. They're going against some pretty good size tonight in, in the guards for Park Center. So they got to use their quickness, use that athleticism and that speed. And uh, it should be a good matchup. I think both teams feel like they have a legitimate shot to win this game. Yeah, look at Park Center's starting lineup. None of the guys listed under six foot four. No. Their high school team is pretty good. You know, and it's, uh, it's they're talented, too. Good basketball, some good football players on there. And I love when, when we were talking to, to Coach Ware, you know, as we were getting ready for the game here, he kind of gave us some notes on each of the players, and his note for his son, JJ, was, Coach's kid, tough life. Yeah. <laughs> but pretty fun to be able to coach your kids. Coach Tyson, of course, got to coach his son, you know, growing, coming through the Osseo program. It makes it a little bit more special when you have your son playing for you. A little different tonight, the side that we're on is actually the visitor's side. Park Center fans right uh, behind us and around us. And the Osseo fans, the home team, on the opposite side here uh, as we look at it. Yeah, it makes for a nice quiet atmosphere around <laughs> our broadcast booth here. <laughs> but that's what makes these you know, high school sports so fun are the rivalry games. And especially when both teams are good too, right? It, it always adds to it and this is going to be a fun one. Well, we, James Ware, the coach of Park Center. We see John Bryant sitting on his bench, too, a former Armstrong coach. And Coach Ware said, do you ever think the two of us would be sitting next to each other? Of course, good Hopkins and Armstrong rivalry back in the day. Yeah, I don't, they did not like each other. No. Back in high well, they're both competitors, and that's, that's why. Carter wins the opening tip, and we are underway. I'll see you in the home black with the orange. Park Center on the road white with the green and gold trim. And an opening steal. Here's Leo Torber. How about that for a start? Well, well, you can't ask for a better start on the road. And what we alluded to in pregame, you got to take care of the ball. You can't give Park Center turnovers and easy possessions like that. And the Park Center creates another turnover, and they've got their second possession. Carrington out top, guarded there by Omoria. Now into the hands. Uh, Penna Baker and double dribble. Huh. Yeah, not a bad start. You talk about pressure and playing the passing lane. You just can't float those kind of passes. And there's Leo. Look at him take off and fly through the air. That head was at the rim level. Going to San Jose State. You guys did a great story on him at CCX. Uh, his journey of not making the ninth grade A team. And here he is, a Division I player and a, and a great player. Osseo trying to get on their board and their third possession here in the first minute of play. Boy, good pressure defense by Park Center and Torber getting right on Waits, forces him to back up, and he steps out of bounds on the sideline. What I love that Park Center, and they've done it for years, John, is they, they just make you speed up. They make you uncomfortable, right? It's not fun getting into a half-court set when you got ball pressure and they're denying everything. You end up speeding up yourself, and you've seen a couple of three turnovers, three possessions, three turnovers. Torber picks up the dribble, gets it off to Ware. Now on the baseline, and Osio to take away. Head into the front court to Amoria. Quick hands there by Trey Smith to get that steal. And the ball knocked away, and they get the steal on Carter. Back the other way. Unable to finish this time was Torber. Back into the hands out top of Ware. His three is long, fouls his own shot. Gets it, back out, Pennebaker, that off the mark on a three-point try, and Osseo is out and running. 
Floating into the lane, and then the pass down low, and up and in for the first two for Osio from Lewis Carter. Great pass from yep. Tyrese Waits. Great pass, and I thought great shot fake. No one aggressive shot blockers coming at you. Great shot fake, kind of dribbled over to the right side. Beautiful finish. It's always good to just get that first basket there. You took care of the pressure, got a great look. Spencer trying to fight position on the block. Carrington drives, too strong on the shot, and rebounded by Barheaga. And the outside three is knocked down by Omoria. Well, we talked about him in pregame, John, almost 50% from three, and they're going to need him. When he gets clean looks, if he's able to knock him down like that, that's going to be a huge plus for the Orioles. I like how they've settled down after four early turnovers here, back-to-back -back baskets. Mark Center scoreless since that opening dunk in the first few seconds of the game from Torber. Pennebaker will hand off Ware, step back, and he traveled. Yeah, here's a look at that three by Amoria in transition. You can see it wasn't like it was poorly defended either. You know, Torbor was right there with a hand up. That's just confidence, knocking it down. Big time shot. Ascio into the front court. And a great shot blocked yeah. by Ware as he blocks the shot of Carger. Carrington back the other way. Feeds the pass into the lane. Pennebaker yeah. offensive foul. Oh, that was just great, great unselfish defense right there. Knowing what's coming, anticipating where the pass was going to go, and then getting there in front of it, outside of the lane. Let's see if he was... Yeah, nice job getting those feet set, taking the charge. The Waits takes the charge, but then Park Center, or Osio gives it back, and it's Park Center. They'll pass it in off the turnover in front of the Osio bench. A little sloppy early with yeah. the turnovers on both sides. Well, I'll tell you what, you can prepare for a press and watch film, but until you're out there with this length and the athleticism of the Pirates, it, it just, you got to get used to it. Much easier said than done to handle that pressure. Carrington will air out of three. Not good, and a rebound by Trey Smith. Well, that's part of his game he's really grown on, and, it, you know, if you can pick your poison, you want to force Carrington to hit contested threes, but he's got a great looking shot. Three up and in for Tyrese Waits. Uh, Tyrese is the leading scorer, almost 17 points a game, also a very capable three-point shooter. How about the start here for the Orioles after really some sloppy offensive plays? Eight points in a row for Osio. Passing traffic into the lane and a turnover for Park Center. And Osio playing pressure defense as well, and they're doing a great job anticipating. No easy lanes to the basket. They have great help defense so far. Barhega on the inbound. Picks up his dribble in a little trouble there in the backcourt. Able to float the pass to Waits, who gets it into the front court. Moria fakes. He now pulls up for a long oh. two and hits. <laughs> what a tough basket, too. Dribbling away from the basket, barely got it set up to see where he was shooting, but knocks it down. Great defense by Waits, making Carrington uncomfortable in the backcourt. It's off of Waits, but forcing to pressures. You look at James Ware, Hopkins High School great, now in his sixth year as head coach here at Park Center. Well, I'll tell you what, every year he's got his team up there, right? They might have... A couple off years here and there, but he's got his kids always ready to play. They're always vying for a potential state championship, and this may be one of his best teams yet. Carter with the steal for Osio. They force another turnover. Waits travel. I hate that those get called as a travel. I think that's a nice spin move. We've seen a couple of travels and double dribbles already called. Uh, I don't know. I think that's a good spin move. Carrington giving it off to Torber. It's been a long four-plus minute spell here for Park Center without a point after getting the opening basket of the game. Carrington trying to change that. Missed on the three. Barhea got the rebound. 
Yeah, I'd like to see Braden Carrington not settle for that, right? So smooth at getting to the rim. I think coming out 0 for 2 from 3, get something easy going, then, then develop that, that three-point shot after you got your rhythm a little bit. Nice Waits, cut. nice baseline. Ware kind of cut that off. Ball was loose, picked back up by Carter. Three. And yep. be a three-second violation. Yeah, I think both offenses a little iffy here to start the game, but I think I attribute most of that to just really good defense, pressure defense. And how about Coach Tim Tyson in his 20th year already? Both both coaches just so good, so so fundamentally strong. Their kids always play so hard as well. And Osio has had what maybe a couple of down seasons in that yep. time, and yep. a couple of years that weren't. But usually they're, they are a top 10 team. There's a drive to the basket and the finish. And Park Center gets back on the scoreboard on the drive and foul in on uh, Torbor. But I love, watch how hard Torbor gets to the rim here and just explodes to the basket. If you're a young kid at home watching, full speed, get to that rim, go strong, gets the contact on the head, still able to finish. Beautiful move, so athletic. Fouls on Amoria. Team fouls even at one apiece. Torbors got all five points for Park Center. And a delay of game warning on Park Center. And if they hit the ball back out of bounds yep. after the made free throw is my guess, although I didn't see it. I, I like what Osio's doing, John, and the fact that they have Barhega, you know, at, at good height at 6'9". Back to him right there. He's able to see over the defense a little bit as far as where that outlet is to break the pressure. Owen Dukowitz, number 24. Isaiah Johnson, number 4, came in at that last whistle for Osio. We get a tie-up, and it's a jump ball. And a turnover as Park Center as the alternate possession. Yeah, you just can't get caught picking up your dribble in traffic against Park Center. Those long, quick hands able to get in there. They're going to tie you up. you got to be strong with it. Get rid of it. If there's two guys on, you've got to find that open guy. Ten five, six minutes into the game. Park Center on the road, trailing Carrington. Offensive foul. I'll get another charge taken by the Orioles. Watch Waits, number two here. Watch him kind of anticipate he squares up and just beats Carrington to the spot there. Smart defense. Memorial bringing up here for Osio. 5 4 in Orioles lead. Draws a double team near midcourt, goes down. Carrington with the steal. Ahead to Pennebaker, and then passing, and ball kicks, and it'll stay with Park Center. Again, just those great hands of, of Park Center, and Braden Carrington did a great job that time of not traveling and getting rid of that ball, starting the break. Just an athletic play again. Pennebaker on the inbound. Top Torber. Oh boy. Another offensive foul. Hey, Gomoria that time stepped yes. in again. Same kind of concept, just beat their man to a spot here, kind of anticipating the drive. Yeah, an easy call for the referees to, to make. Anytime you get that kind of that shoulder lowered or that offhand extended, and already the third charge that Osio has taken, you can tell that's something they probably saw on film that they emphasize this week. If we can beat them to a spot, the charges are there to be taken. They've done a really nice job. Johnson draws a double team in the backcourt, floats the pass, and Marheaga gets it into the front court. Back into the hands of Omoria and then the Waits. Well, I tell you, Osio's really shot the ball well when they've gotten shot attempts off. Ball deflected and then off the hands of Carrington, still Osio ball. He'll make 
things easy, do they? Park center. But it's almost like if you can handle that initial onslaught, right? If you double, if you can find the open guy, move the ball quick, ball fake, you can get a good shot. And Osio's showing they can knock the shots down if they're able to get them. Like I said, it's just a hard defense to get comfortable with. You never kind of get your rhythm because you're constantly running. And block out of bounds by Spencer, able to block the shot of Barhaga. Yeah, and Spencer, six foot six with long arms. Watch him get up here against a bigger six foot nine player. Watch him time it. Coming over from the help side, great block without falling. Baseline drive here, and then Ware's going to get called for a foul. Barhaga go to the line. Well, that's what you got to do. You just got to go strong. And a lot of times referees will reward you if you just go strong. Good patience too that time by Barhaga, kind of faking it, going baseline, going hard. Now you got to make them pay by knocking the free throws down. Heck had 21 points the other night against Minnetonka. One of five Osseo players to score in double figures. He led the way. Yeah, he was big. And he, if he plays big like that, they are a completely different team. Got them both. Yeah, got a nice stroke, too. Came into the night just over 50% from the free throw line. But those two look pure. Nice start here for Osseo. Seven and a half minutes into the game, and Park Center with just five points. Whistle will get an Osseo foul or on. Uh, it's like Kukowicz, no, Barhaga. Yeah, nice job driving here by Torbor. And I think they're going to get it on the floor, not in the act of shooting. away by Dukowicz, who's the last touch by. Off of where? Osseo basketball. Oh, nice job by Dukowicz, just fighting for it. Pass kind of hung in the air. Dukowicz, you might remember his name, great football player for the Orioles, and just a good athlete, good competitor there, fighting for it, able to create the turnover. Johnson open for a three, too strong, Carrington rebounds. Well, even though he missed that, that was great offense. He got a good penetration, nice kick out, and a really clean look. Spencer able to get a shot up. Missed it, though, and Osseo rebounds. We're talking about Park Center's defense. Osseo yeah. has not allowed any easy shots at all, other than that dunk to start the game. Well, they've challenged everything. And that's what you have to do if you have a shot to beat Park Center. You can't give them anything. It's going to be a travel. You gonna travel or offensive Looks like they foul? call the foul. Yeah, I think they got away Carter. from the ball. Yeah. yeah. But if you can force Park Center into a half-court offense and challenge everything, then you know then they're playable. It's when they can do both, right? When they're running and getting transition, they're getting dunks, their energy levels up. That picks up their defensive pressure, and then all of a sudden, offensively, they're just too much to handle. Osseo doing a nice job of forcing Park Center to run their offense. Foul was on Lewis Carter. It's his first, that last foul. Carrington going baseline. Good defense yep. by Waits. Didn't allow a shot. Nice defense has been yep. outstanding for Osseo. And just no mistakes, right? No easy layups, no easy paths. There's and a Baker. Yeah. That was a nice shot. Floats yep. it up and in. Well, he's got that ability, too. At, at six foot five, averaging almost 15 a game. He can do it from long range. He can do it driving like that. He's got that good length, good smoothness there. Yeah. 
our scoreboard are in the truck and mine on scorebook has Osseo with 12. Somehow on the scoreboard here they got a bonus point. It's 13 to 7 according to what we're posting here. Tough. Yeah, it's a turnover. Osseo able to force oh, they got Johnson a into a turnover. I think they oh, got they a timeout. Yes, yeah. they did. Yep. Well, that's what happens, John, when you play at home. You get extra <laughs> points here and there. <laughs> There's a look at uh, Park Center. Again, just starting conference play. 2-0 in Northwest Suburban Conference play, averaging just under 64 points a game, but winning by an average of 17 points per game. Why well, the key, look at that, 47 points per game defensively. That's... If you can hold opponents to 47 points, no matter what your offense is doing, you're going to have nights where you struggle offensively. Your shots aren't going in. You're a little sloppy. But if you can always defend like that, you're, you're going to have a shot to win every game, which they have. Osseo's played four top ten teams so far, one and three. Yep. Also 2-0 in conference games. And ranked number eight in Class 4A. Well, and I think, if, so what if you lose some early games, right? You get tested, you find out where you're going to stand, what you need to work on, and I can tell you that no matter what their record is, the way these kids play and the way Coach Tyson has them ready, they're a team you don't want to see when the end of the year comes around. Well, 12 or 13 to 7, at some point I suppose we'll have to sync with what the uh, scoreboard has here. But we'll settle for 12 and a half. <laughs> Inbound pass in front of the Park Center bench by the Orioles' Lewis Carter. Ty Swanson, number five in the game for the Orioles. Carter able to get the bounce pass. Knocked away at Swanson, able to pick it up in the backcourt. And Park Center will reset with weights. Swanson to Carter pops out to the corner. Blair defensively on him. Not giving him much space. Carter trying to go baseline has to come back out with a pass to Swanson. Carter by the taller Pennebaker. Slides a pass out high. Carter dribble drive. Goes to the basket oh. and scores. Oh, just a grown man move there. Great little hesitation. Came back to his right. Used that strong body. Got a good look. Drive by Torber, not good. Follow up will go. And here comes Osseo. Waits a nice little move to get away from a steal. Almost fouled there by Torber at midcourt. Double team, and then the pressure forces a turnover, and Torber's got another easy two. Oh, uh, there's that just relentless pressure. He creates the turnover, and they are gone off to the races. And Torber that time with two hands said, I don't want a chance missing another dunk. He hammers it with two. Waits. Nice pass. Oh, great pass down low and it's two for Isaiah Johnson. Well, two things. What a great pass. You get into the heart of the defense with your head up. And nice job by Johnson that time, too. Cutting to the basket, being available. Whistle and a travel on Amoria, or rather on Torbor, as he kind of slipped there. Yeah, it looked like his foot just slipped there as he was going to the basket. So much anger. This is where it gets tricky. If you pick that dribble up, Park Center does such a good job of denying the nearest passing outlet. Seventeen nine, Osseo. Drive, tough shot yeah. by Waits, won't go, and Carrington with the rebound. Really tough shot. Nice, Penna Baker on the wing, and he hits for three. I'll tell you, Pennebaker is that other guy who can give you points in, in bunches. If Carrington's struggling scoring the basketball, as you saw there, happy to give it up, make a play for his teammate. Pennebaker knocks down a three. Almost another steal by Pennebaker. Swanson missing on the three. And out of bounds, it's Park Center basketball. Yeah, good hustle there. Kai Dukowitz almost got that save. 
Moria back in along with Trey Smith. And there's Carrington. I love that. You see his head up, always looking, seeing what the defense is giving him that time. Makes a great play. Knocking it over. Pennebaker knocks down his second field goal. He's got five. Six ten to play here in the first half. Pennebaker lost the ball going to the basket. And it's out of bounds off of Osio. And you can see how smooth he is too, right? Just getting a step, doesn't, you know, utilize this great quickness. He's just smooth, great body control, able to get where he wants to go. Birthday into the game for Osio. Passed it back out. And then there's a three from Carrington. His first basket in the game. Their leading score. Yep, and that was big for them and for him. And that was a good three or four feet behind the three-point line. Showing off that smooth stroke from range. Three from the corner and answering for Osio was a warrior. Well, he's a guy defensively, you just got to have that awareness. You can't leave him. He is such a lethal three-point shooter. Carrington. A little floater won't go. Ball tipped around. Spencer trying to save it. Gets it back into play. But Osio has it. Nice shot fake. Oh. Knock out of bounds. Oh, just lost on the baseline. Turnover by Osio. By Nate Vinson. Well, and that's not going to show up in the stat sheet there, John, but what Park Center did, that was a great shot fake by Omoria, and they had another guy already close out on him, and they took away a look. So it was great defensive rotation there. Five-point Osseo lead. After Park Center scored the opening two points of the game, the Orioles have led since. Block as Johnson got up and blocked there. Smith rather blocked the shot of Ware. Ball out of bounds. Oh, great, Stay great park center. Great timing. Was that Carger on the block? I believe it was. That was Carger, yeah. yes. You know, Ware did a nice job of kind of not showing he was going to shoot. That was just great timing by Carger there with those long arms to contest that and not and do it without falling. Three missed this time by Pennebaker, but look who ends up with the rebound. That's why shooters can be the most dangerous offensive rebounds because they can see where it's going. Carrington pull up three, way short. Good hustle to yep. save it, but back into bounds to Osio after where it hustled after the ball. Well, it was just great effort by Barhea got there to contest that. You got six foot nine contesting on it. It's easy to, to leave it short. Carter in traffic goes back out of Moria, backs it out. Yeah. And that pass goes behind Carter from Smith and is out of bounds. I'll tell you, the level of defense, John, is on both sides. There's just nothing easy. It's like a wall. They drive, there's nowhere to go. You, you kind of rush the kick out. Both teams rotate so well. They really make you work for any point. Mohamed Daiwara, number 33, into the game for Park Center. Torber, seven points to lead Park Center early. Under four minutes to go, missed on this shot. Vincent had a hand on him, he's gonna get fouled by Daiwara and head back the other way. His first 15 foul on Park Center. How about Nate Vincent there, the smallest guy on the court, going in and getting that rebound? Tyrese Waits back in. And Vincent out. Hey, I got giving it into the hands of a warrior. We'll bring it up into the front court against Birthday. And a steal for Park Center. And then Park Center <laughs> gives it back up, and the steal by Trey Smith. Smith will get it on the wing. He'll go baseline. 
And the ball deflected. Yeah. Ends up going back over to Park Center. Well, you just you feel like the ball's never safe with these both teams' defenses. They are. They just attack the ball. They're great with deflections and quick hands. You just got to be aware, cognitively, of where the defense is because they're coming from, from all sides. Both defenses just relentless. What's the old cliche, John, that offense sells tickets and, and defense wins championships? Yep, so there you go. If that's true, both of these teams uh, have a pretty good shot, I think. They're intense defender, defenders. Harrington. Backing his man down and goes in and scores over Wade. I love that move that time by Brain Carrington. 6-5 long. Just smooth, took his time. There was no double team. Backed him down, got a great shot. Didn't settle for a, a contested three-point shot. Got what he wanted. If he does that, he might be unguardable. Memoria, we wind down the two and a half minutes to play. Tough defense by Carrington. Gives the pass up to Dukowitz. Arheaga. Now it's Waits looking. Dukowitz open for a three. Missed it and rebounded by Spencer. Ball knocked away. Spencer gets it. Pass. Oh, hustle. Traffic bodies on the floor, tie up jump ball. It'll be Osseo basketball. Well, you see both number ones that time getting on the floor, but how about Amoria just diving, sacrificing his body to try to get a possession, and he did it. Just such what? active hands. Ware and Pennebaker back in for Park Center. Ball pass too far out in front of Umoria, and Park Center gets the basketball. Another turnover for Osio. Tough shot by Carrington. Not good. Ball chipped out and pulled down by Smith. Trey Smith oh. passes in. Uh, Berhagen not able to get it to go. And foul by Duco. It's also missed. And back comes Park Center. Pennebaker to Spencer. Well, the first time we've seen Park Center get out and, and be able to run in transition. And all set up, I mean, that was transition. They had numbers, Osseo did, but great contest again, even on that three on two, and it led to a fast break going the other way. Tied up on our scoreboard, still 20 to 19. Osseo within the building. We'll check that at halftime. Dukowitz down low. Barhega shot up, oh. not good. Spencer rebounds. Well, I, even though he missed, I love the idea, I love the move. Just couldn't get it to fall. But that is one thing, he's got that height down there. Let's see if Osio continues to go to that. Torber tries and scores. And the first part center lead since it was two to nothing. Lead pass ahead, Dukowitz able to save it to the corner, shot gets blocked. Ware's got it to Carrington, Park Center on a run here. Panna Baker for three, missed the shot. Chased down in the corner though. Back out, Torber to Spencer. Carrington, deep three and hits. Park Center on a run here as the lead. Final 30 seconds of the first half. Again, tough defense by Torber out front on Waits. Pennebaker able to block the shot. Unless they call them for a foul, which they may have. A little flurry here for Park Center. A deep three by Braden Carrington. And then the block by Pennebaker. But they got him for a foul on the body. And it's his second. Only the sixth team foul. And with just 10 seconds to go. We're not going to get into the one and one here. Be the final possession for Osio. Moria picks up his dribble. Back out to Trey Smith. 
Well, let it go too late, and that'll be the end of the first half. The Park Center with a late surge. And after a lot of turnovers, especially on their side, they're able to take the lead here on Osseo at halftime. Entertaining half of basketball, a lot of good defense. Exciting plays in Park Center, number one team in the state, taking the lead here going into the break. Let's go down to uh, Ryan now standing by with James Ware. Coach, uh, intensity at an all-time high. They're great defense both sides. What do you think? I mean, it's a great rivalry game so far. Uh, I mean, they, they came out hitting every shot, uh, got up to a big 10-2 uh, lead. You know, we just, we just got to stick with it, you know. We're pretty good defensively, so over the course of kind of, we're actually getting some stops. We just can't score right now. So, you know, we just got to keep playing. Uh, long game. Glad to see we eventually got up here in the, in the first half. And we just got to make some shots in the second half, play a little better offensively. One thing I noticed as a broadcaster who's seen a lot of games, you guys contest everything. It yeah. seemed like there are very few open looks. Defensively, is that kind of the mindset of nothing easy ever? Yeah, I mean, well, the, the yeah, I mean, this is no secret, but, you know, we're pretty long, we're pretty athletic, okay? So we're, you know, we're just, we're just trying to be as aggressive on the ball as we can and then contest everything at the rim. Uh, and, and that's how we got to play defensively. Like I said, they got 20 points. I feel decent about that. I'm looking at our 24, and I'm a little disappointed we can't score. Okay, most importantly, a lot of our viewers remember you as a very talented offensive player. You can't score against your team in practice anymore, can you? No chance. Uh, that, <laughs> thanks for the honesty. Uh, well, <laughs> I, I, got, I, got, I got Coach Bryant, and, yeah. and uh, I got some former players. You know, we brought over Johnny Gilbert. We got, we got, some, we got some coaches that can play. Good luck in the second half, Coach. To Back to you, John. All right, thanks very much, Ryan. We'll hear from Coach Tyson before the start of the second half. Park Center with a lead at halftime. More boys basketball from Osseo High School after this timeout. Center leading Osseo on halftime. Pirates number one in the state. They've got the amazing amount of talent. Last month, Jay Wilcox from our staff did a great story on Park Center senior Leo Torber. His game has grown by leaps and bounds. Park Center senior basketball star Leo Torbor went from not making the Pirates freshman A team a few years back to becoming a Division I signee. You know, sometimes I look back, I'm like, wow, like I really have grown from nine, from being, you know, a freshman playing on 9B, you know, being overlooked for like two years. You know, that summer going to junior year, that was when like, that's when Coach Ware literally saw, saw the potential. It was like, yep, he can really be a great kid. I congratulate myself for, you know, sticking with it and just, you know, sticking with the plan and look where I'm, look where I'm at now. Driving it and scoring it again. And I've never seen a guy go from 9B to, to Division One basketball. Uh, you know, that didn't grow to be 6'10", you know what I mean? So, uh, a truly, truly unique situation. Torbor accepted a scholarship offer to play for San Jose State. 
A huge deal for someone who wasn't a can't-miss star from an early age. So what's fueled his surge? It's a mixture of things. The growth spurt really helped me. I also feel like, you know, weight room, Coach Joe, you know, in the weight room really helped me as well, but also just coming to open gyms, you know, practices with a good spirit, with a good mind, you know, guys like Braden, Ayuba, you know, the rest of the team, you know, helping me, you know, evolve as a player. First off, I'm super proud of Leo. Uh, I'm super proud of all the things that I've, I've watched him overcome, you know, from uh, things on the court to things off the court to, you know, academically, just the entire picture of Leo, uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm super impressed by him. As good as he's become, Leo isn't the best known player on a very good Pirates team. Braden Carrington also signed to play Division I ball at the University of Minnesota. It's been nice having someone to compare notes with about recruiting. He's been through it longer than me. It was my first time, you know, it was really stressful. It was really stressful. It was at times, you know, I was, you know, long nights like, I want to do this, but I also want to do this, you know, but I really, I know I came to him, talked to him, he helped me, you know, settle my mind. Seeing him grow and then, you know, we signed on the same day, so watching him sign that letter, you know, I kind of got emotional because I was like, yeah, he really worked hard for this, he really deserved it. The Pirates are ranked number one in the state class 4A poll. A huge first week that included wins over a top team in class 3A, De La Salle, and defending 4A state champ Wyzetta set the tone for what could be a very special season. That whole first week was very good for us, you know, us playing really tough teams, especially Wyzetta, you know, Wyzetta, the state championship team last year. So, I mean, for, the te for us to test, you know, test ourselves and them to see where we're at, you know, for us to come out with a, a huge win, you know, it really helped us. It really built momentum for us. For Leo Torbor, individual accolades are nice, but one goal stands above the rest in his senior season. Obviously, I want to win the state championship. That's that's the one big goal that we we all want. We want a state championship. You know, me being a senior last year, you know, losing the way we did, you know, that really gave us a chip a chip on our shoulder. You know, it's like okay, we're coming to the season. We want to win a state championship. You know, just. To win the state championship would be great, but also I feel like, you know, I just want to have, like, you know, good individual stats, you know. If I can, try to, you know, at least shoot for Mr. Basketball, you know, get a replay, you know what I mean? Like, one of those individual awards, but at the end of the day, like, all I want to win is a state championship. Thanks to Jay Wilcox for that story. Park Center leading Osseo at halftime. We have more Northwest Suburban Conference boys basketball. The second half coming your way on CCX after this. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button, and from there, choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. Park Center leading Osseo on halftime here, trailing much of that first half, Ryan, but they come back and take the lead yeah, at halftime. Yeah, a great way to finish the half. And I'll tell you, great, great teams usually finish halves and start second halves strong, right? You want to get that momentum going into the to the locker room there, but uh, what an intense defensive first half, no doubt about it. Let's look at highlights from the first 18 minutes of play here tonight at Osseo. Could not have started any right more exciting. Game, yeah. Right out of the gate, the Leo Torber dunk for the first two points in the game. But then they were stuck on two for a long time. Osseo able to, to get some baskets, although they get the, the block there. The lay in there by Torber later. He was the only thing they had going early on, got the basket and foul. And, he, and the theme is just contesting everything, right? Nothing easy, really, on either side. That was a nice play by Carrington. He didn't get it going kind of until later in the in the first half. A great pass there for the three. Penna Baker at the three, and then Carrington putting up two points there. Another look at that three from uh, Penna Baker for the basket, and then Carrington with a deep three. And on the Osseo end, able to get some points inside, and the hoop there for the Orioles by Isaiah Johnson, the deep three by Omoria. 
And Amori with a pull up two for a basket. And they get the shot block and it's a really intense first half. You can see by plays like that. You look at uh, Park Center taking a lead. Let's go down to the floor again. And Tim Tyson standing by with Ryan Iverson. Oh, you got to go quick. What do you think of the first half? Good first half. Too many turnovers on both sides. We got to be able to handle Park Center's pressure a little bit more. If we had looked to attack and beat their initial pressure, we got to get to the rim. Yeah, good luck in the second half. Thanks, Coach. Back to you, John. All right, thanks very much. So going back to the score, we, you know, again, our book had 24-19. Our book in the truck had 24-19. Well, we have to go with the official scorebook here is which is 24-20, and so that's what we're going to go with with our score at halftime and starting the second half. Pirates with the lead by four points. As you look at the leading scorer so far, Torber with nine, and Carrington with eight to lead the way for Park Center, Amoria with eight to lead Osseo so far. So really good defense, uh, Ryan, certainly on both sides, but I thought there were also possessions where there were some unforced errors. Not the yep. cleanest game by either team either. But that's what pressure will do to you, too. It, you just you start playing fast, you play uncharacteristic, you think someone's there, and you, you make a pass before you're ready, or you try to force a shot. So I think it's all generated just by this intensive defensive pressure by both sides and just nothing easy. You saw when Park Center kind of slowed down there. And Carrington was able to get to that low, you know, that low post turnaround shot he had, kind of got him going, and Torbor attacking the rim. So it's going to be who can who can take care of the basketball, who can be patient on offense, get good shots, because both teams are, I think are shooting pretty well when they do get sh good good looks. All right, one half to go here. Park Center trying to remain unbeaten on the season. Fifth game already in 10 games for Osseo against a top 10 team. Pennebaker attacking early, missed the shot, follow-up try won't go on the try by Ware and rebounded by Osseo back into the front court. Smith will throw it out front to Omoria. And Omoria didn't get a lot of looks, but he knocked him down when he got him in that first half. See if Osseo able to get him going a little bit offensively. Marheaga picks up his dribble, guarded by Spencer there in the corner, throws it out top, and Smith able to corral it. He'll attack oh, the basket nice. and yeah. score. Trey Smith's first basket of the game. Well, and he's only a sophomore, but he's at 6'5", lengthy, beautiful play. Yeah. Carrington answers with a three-pointer. Well, you can kind of tell he got his rhythm there at the end of the first half, the last few minutes, and carried over into the second. If he's hitting that, that three, he becomes really hard to guard with his length, his quickness, and if he's knocking down threes, he's, he's the full package there. At 35 points in his last game. And we're gonna get a, a foul here on Park Center on Spencer. Nobody in foul trouble in this game. Pennebaker the only one with even two fouls. Ball deflected out of bounds by Torber. And there's a great example right there. Just an innocent, you know, out of bounds play, but you that ball can't hang in the air. Not when you're playing the Pirates. You crisp passes, ball faking. If someone's open, you got to get it to them. You can't telegraph your pass. So they're going to get their hands on it, and a lot of times that'll lead to a, a transition easy basket. Whistle, and it's going to be Park Center basketball. Turnover for Osseo. They're going to have to get weights going. Yep. Just the one yep. three-pointer so far in the game. He's their leading scorer. I love it. Going to the post here. Carrington puts it up and in. Defender went down. And Carrington with the first five points for Park Center in the second half. And now has 13 in the game. Yeah, and I don't mind that trying to get a charge, but I love that the ref did not call that. And instead, Carrington just takes what the defense has given him there. Nice play. Smith lost the handle on the ball. Knocked out of bounds by Park Center. Osseo late in the half kind of went stagnant and unable yep. to get some... Yep. 
uh, get any points. Part of that was Park Center defense creating some big turnovers and changing your momentum. Well, one of the things, too, you're seeing Osio on offense right now, you know, maybe not much of a plan, right? Just kind of content dribbling on the perimeter. They got to get to what they want to get. You got to force Park Center to react to you. If Park Center is able to dictate defensively what you're doing, it Miss could be a long day. Excuse me, Carrington missing on the three. Nice pass. Memoria down to Smith, baseline, trying to reverse. Shot not good. Foul up. Barhea got can't get that shot to go. Park Center rebound. Torber back to the front court. Attacks the basket. Too strong, but he's fouled. Parker goes down hard, holding his ankle a little bit. He's going to get called for the foul on top of it. Well, and there's a great look. I mean, Torbor just athleticism in transition and definitely some contact there. But I just love Osio. Didn't give it up easily. Still nothing easy ever. You don't like to see that. Carter holding that ankle. That's always the scary part when you leave your feet like that is that you might end up landing on it. And those ankles, that can, that can hurt. Carter, four points in the first half. I played a good game overall, yep. though. Well, at 6'4", he can kind of match up with anyone anywhere, right? He's quick enough to guard guards. He's also physical and strong enough to to guard guys down low. So kind of does it all for this team. And that's a good contest, yeah. It just kind of came down awkwardly yeah. on it. Yeah, I don't know if he that. came down. I couldn't see it from that shot. If he came down just on the floor, if he caught Potter yeah. Torber on the way down, too. And, be in some pain yeah. have helped off the court here and, and a big loss too I think for Osio in particular in this game where he, his value is really just in the the variety of, of what he, who he can guard and what he can do for them well, hopefully it's not a long-term injury yeah. based on how he's walking right now you would think he's done for tonight but we'll see well, a lot of times with those ankles, the pain is really severe right yeah. away. You get it retaped, kind of, and, and a lot of times just on adrenaline, you can get through it. Those are one of those that uh, later tonight is when it starts throbbing. It's not fun. But that is a great example why you can test a shot like that and put, you know, Torbor on the line, make him earn it rather than give him a, a free layup. Makes one out of two. Ten points now for the senior. So at halftime, headed to San Jose State next year. I guarantee it's not below zero in San Jose no. right now. We should broadcast down in San Jose. <laughs> we do all their games. <laughs> well, Tim Miles, the former uh, North Dakota State, Nebraska coach, is the, is the new head coach down there and has Minnesota ties. A little spin move. Unable to finish, though, on the shot was Isaiah Johnson. Yeah. Well, even though he didn't get that to fall, I like the move. He was able to get a good shot attempt, just didn't knock it down. Carrington from 15 feet hit. What, what I love about his game even more so this year than in, in years past is he's just taking what the defense has given him, right? He's not forcing anything smooth, gets to that mid-range, and at 6'5", with those long arms, able to get rise up and make it. Torber with the steal and gets fouled by Smith. Again, the defense forcing the foul there. They get the turnover, and we're going to time out here for Osio. Full timeout. You got to figure the last what six minutes of the first half, and here we are, you know, into into the second half. Here, just not a lot of scoring, nothing going offensively for Osio, and then you, you throw in a turnover like that, you can see Torbar is just so relentless when he's able to get a deflection, get a steal, what he can do and turn that into offense immediately. Now Park Center able to score, what, the last eight points in the first half. Yep. They've outscored Osio 8-2 here in the yep. second half so far. Yeah, and I like the timeout by Coach Tyson. Just, hey, let's calm down. Let's get back to doing what we're doing. Let's take care of the, the basketball and get good looks. We've got a couple good looks. You just got to knock them down. 
Coach Ware's animated. He's not going to nope. let his kids let up, right? No, that's not in his nature. Park Center after tonight, the next conference game. They have two home games next week in the Northwest Suburban, hosting Elk River Tuesday and Armstrong on Thursday. Osseo will be on the road twice next week. Rogers on Tuesday night and then Wednesday at Spring Lake Park. The back to back. These teams will meet again on Monday, February 7th at Park Center. And could very well meet again in the yep. section playoffs, you would yep. think. So out of the timeout, Park Center up by 10, and now 11 as Torber hits the first free throw. Well, you get the feel, John, that this is kind of that breaking point of the game, right? Osseo down 11 here, down 12. Can they break the pressure? Can they get a good look? Can they score just to get their confidence up? Five second yeah. call. Well, another, again, the defense is what causes yeah. that turnover. You know how hard that is, too, to guard someone for five seconds to deny him the ball? That It's not just athleticism, quickness, and length. It takes just focus and effort, too, to do that. Pennebaker yep. takes Love the return that. pass from Torber. Well, it's smart. They're trying to get Carrington down in the post. They know he's got that mismatch over Tyrese Waits down low. Where in some traffic oh, has it stripped away. Here comes Osseo. Johnson, too hard with the shot. Chip up. I Torber. think by Torber. <laughs> and puts in two. Yeah. I don't know. I guess you know, we give Johnson the, the, the points on that or who? But it's Osseo basketball. <laughs> yeah, he basketball. definitely. That was definitely Torber with the, with the hands. Carrington missing the shot. And Osseo back the other way. Well, either way, it's a basket. Let's see if that can spark Osseo here. Waits for yeah. a tough shot. Oh. And an and one or offensive foul? I never saw the call. It is. No, they got offensive. Oh, it is. Yeah. 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 No basket. It's too bad because it was a really nice move. Look at him almost lose his balance. But yeah, yeah you could see definitely waiting for him was James Spencer. And that's one of those where, and it's hard to do because your momentum's carrying you, but if you can just go straight up and straight down, avoid that contact. But that was a heck of an individual move, even though it doesn't count. Well, Spencer, it was one of those contributing guys who mm -hmm. was making, you know, was making a good play here and there, not going to get the points that uh, that Torber and Carrington are, but you need players like him on the court. Gives you some size and some strength on the inside. And just great effort, right? Yeah. And challenging every play, taking charges. You're right. Pennebaker too strong, rebounded by Omoria. Here come the Orioles on the run. Waits pulls up on the wing. Back to Omoria. And a takeaway or knock away by Torber. And he gets the ball back, shut up, and he draws another foul. They go back to the line for the fifth and sixth time here in the second half, fifth and sixth free throws. It's just amazing how quick their hands are, right? Everyone on, on both teams, but especially Torbar, watch the hands. You can see him, he just came right into your screen out of nowhere to get those hands and to do it without falling. Dukowitz with a, a hard foul there to make sure he didn't get the three-point play. Now James oh, Spencer oh. is down for Park Center. Well, they got the Thera drill, though, maybe a cramp or something going in. Yeah, when you see that cramp, that, that calf tightening up like that, a lot of times it's cramping. You hope that's what it is. And those can be painful, but usually they yeah. dissipate relatively quickly. But we got to see if we can get a get a hold of that that Thera drill and Just use it for us. Yeah, when we get up. Well, yeah. well, use it while we're <laughs> broadcasting here. I got you know the feet are getting a little sore. These kids now have everything. And, uh, you'd have told me in the mid '90s that we'd have uh, massage guns <laughs> <laughs> to help people when they're they're cramping up on the sideline. I wouldn't have believed it. It was uphill both ways when, when I went to school, John. Coach told you to get back in there, right? Yeah. Iverson, get back in the game. Well, you know what's funny, John, is I, you know, playing college football and professional basketball, 
I never had a cramp until I was done playing. And I had one during the middle of the night once. And it, I mean, you always hear how painful it is. I sure hope that. Almost looks like he landed on his knee, but I, I, the way they were looking at it, you're hoping it's just a cramp. That's the way they're treating it anyway. Well, let's take time out. A so, massage timeout brought to you by Theragun. 34-24, <laughs> Park Center leads Osseo. We're back to Osseo High School after this. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is now available on Roku and Apple TV. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including daily newscasts and full sporting events. To find the app, go to the store and search CCX and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. Now available on Roku and Apple TV. John Jacobson with Ryan Iverson, high school boys basketball, the first Friday of 2022. Park Center, a 10 point lead on Osseo at halftime. They're up four at halftime, now up 10, now 11 in the second half. It's four more. Been lots of practice at the free throw line. Four out of five yep. here in the second half from the line. Well, he's just been so aggressive, too, in transition and in half court, just driving the ball to the basket, forcing Osseo to either Foul him or, or give him the lamp. So he's, he's been in the tack mode. There's Waits putting up the three from the corner. Not good. Rebounded by Torber. Yeah, and a rare good look for Osseo that time. They pushed it up. Got a great look. Carrington fakes uh, the three. Pulls up for the yeah. two. So smooth, isn't it? You know, it could have maybe forced a contested three. Nice little shot fake. One dribble. Gets to that free throw line and elevates with that length. No one's going to be able to block that. And silky smooth mid-range game. Last year was ahead 10 to 2 at one point in this game. Park Center of the late surge in the first half. It's been almost all Pirates here in the second half. Carrington and Torber have combined for all 14 of their second half points. Here's Waits nice. shot up and in. Yeah, just a great move. There wasn't much going on that possession. Not a lot of movement. Everyone kind of just standing around watching Waits, but Great body control, able to create his own shot. Nice finish. 12 and a half minutes to play. Park Center by 12. And see Asio chains over to a zone here. Three from the wing. Missed by Ware. They get the rebound, though. Back out and tipped by Waits. He gets the steal. Nice oh, pass. Dish off pass. Not shot, not good. Ware getting in the yeah. way, but the follow-up is up and in by Isaiah Johnson. Well, I think Isaiah was surprised he got that pass, kind of rushed the shot, but attacked the follow-up, able to get it. There's transition again. And Osio, just when it looked like things might be all park center, come back-to-back -back baskets here. Carrington puts it on the floor to the basket and one. I'll tell you what makes that, that play happen is because he's been knocking down his three-point shot, so he does a great job showing shot right there. And all that does is Isaiah goes a little bit for that shot. He gets that half step, and I'll tell you, a lot of people thought he was long and lean. Look at the muscles. He's put on some weight, been in the weight room. you got that, that length and strength that becomes hard to deal with. Brayden Carrington now 20 points, 12 here in the first six minutes of the second half. And, and at one point, I don't think he had scored with no. maybe six minutes right. left in the first half. So it's really all come at the end of the first half and here in the second half. He's been great offensively. Johnson lost the handle on the ball, able to get it back. Baseline. Moria coming to the basket and he's fouled. He'll go to the line. Well, it was a nice drive and kick. Waits stayed with it, but great closeout by Carrington. Able to close out with a high hand, but also move his feet. Just nothing easy against the Pirates. We'll get Carrington for the foul. It's his second. Well, and I like the play, too, by Amoria. Just take it in strong. I mean, like we've always talked about, John, that referees more often than not are going to reward you if you go strong. 
his first point here in the second half for Moria. Ayubo birthday in. And wear out. Second one also up and in for Omuria. Nasio tonight is four free throws, but they made them all. Harrington, oh. collision at half court, and get a foul on Barhaga. Well, you love the effort of the big fella there, trying to get a steal there, but that big body lands India. You're going to feel it. Pennebaker. Forber back out. Pennebaker left open. Max on the three. His Lock second three in the game. And I think he's the guy you kind of forget about with Park Center, right? You, you know, Leo Torber with his athleticism and his dunks, and of course, Braden Carrington going to the Gophers. You forget about Pennebaker, and he has got such a nice looking jump shot. And a great smooth play by Torber to set him up, and he buries it. Great pace. And again, against the zone, if you can get into the middle of the defense like that, the defense has to collapse. And Pennebaker, if he's shooting like that, they become uh, really, really tough to defend. Torre picked up his second foul, a whistle ago. Asu needs a surge in a hurry, Ryan, down yep. 14. Well, it's 14, and against this defense, it almost feels like it's down 25, you yeah. know? Moria. Oh, Barhea got was slipping and tried to get the ball off to Johnson. And Johnson had already come down the baseline, Turner Barasio. Well, you almost feel like Asio, you know, they start the game they they were fearless right they were attacking they were shooting they they got good looks and they kind of just feel slowly as the game has gone on that the, the park center defense has just kind of won that battle i think osseo these last 10 minutes or so has to be relentless just play and attack and be aggressive and, and take shots and let the chips where they fall evan johnson number 32 is six seven senior into the lineup for the first time tonight for osseo Arhega gets a rest. To the basket, Carrington the finish. Oh, a great pace that time, they didn't force it. Carrington got at that high post, they're right at the free throw line, and one dribble, he's at the rim with those long arms. Waits, offensive foul. Corber draws yeah. the charge. We've seen that a couple times. Osseo in the first half doing a nice job of it that time. Torbor just kind of anticipated, beat his man to the spot. Ooh. Tim Tyson did not agree with yeah. the call. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, if, if things don't work out at San Jose State, Leo Torbor has got a great, maybe a good acting career. <laughs> uh, way short, but Carrington's underneath the basket and puts it up and in. Well, I love what he did there. So many guys don't watch ball flights of shots when they're rebounding, right? He was there. He could see that it was short. Went up and grabbed it. Didn't wait for it. And almost got a free layup out of it, too. And that's something that either, you know, comes naturally or, but not, you're right, a lot of players they don't, don't do that. They don't do it, you yeah. know, and, and that was one thing. John, I was six foot three and a, and a really good rebounder. I, oh, you gotta make that. Spencer's back into the game, by the way. But Theragun worked. And the shot missed by Carrington, Osseo rebound. But yeah, watching the ball flight to see where rebounds were gonna go, especially if they're gonna be short. Oh, nice move. Three point basket for Kirby's Waits. And that's what we gotta see more of. That was no hesitation, just a one, two, quick crossover and a step back. Created the space and knocked it down. And that's what they need. Amoria and Waits, they need them to just go. One, two dribbles and make plays. And a bigger spins oh. and finishes. You see how he finished too with his right? Almost a little spin on it. Kind of a finger roll with some spin. That was a nice looking move. Pennebaker now in double figures with 10 too. Yeah. 50-33. Yeah. Spencer comes out. 
Pass to Johnson and back out. Waits to Amoria. Long three. Not good for Bernard and rebounded by Pennebaker. Cody will tack the basket oh. again. That shot wouldn't go and rebounded by Evan Johnson. When we talk about Braden Carrington being smooth, the Pennebaker is smooth too. Nice laugh. That's up and in yeah. for two. Moria's got a dozen. Seven and a half minutes to well, go. Maybe and, that's uh, where the extra point that we've been talking about, because on the scoreboard they have Amoria with 13. Yeah, they gave him a bonus point yeah. at some point. Uh, timeout taken by Park Center here, their first charge timeout of the game. Well, this is what I love to see Amoria, just no hesitation, using that quickness, good body control. Uses his body to kind of shield the, the bigger defender is able to finish. And then play before that, Waits hits that nice three. They got to play like that the rest of the way. Just let them go. You miss, you miss, but you got to stay aggressive, be aggressive, and attack Park Center. Here's the Minnesota basketball news. Class 4A rankings for this week. Park Center at number one. Shakopee ranked second. Wysetta defending state 4A champion is ranked third. And Lakeville North. Eastridge, Hopkins sitting at 8 and 1, ranked 6. Owatonna at number 7. Osseo, Minnetonka, and Armstrong rounding out the top 10. And Osseo beat Minnetonka the other yeah. night, but has lost to Owatonna, Hopkins, and Wyzetta. And perhaps here to Park Center. Yeah, what tonight. a tough schedule. Yeah. You know, and then you look at Wyzetta, you know, with three losses. They've played a tough schedule too, but Park Center, you know, dispatched to Wyzetta somewhat handily when they met too. So. Right now it feels maybe like Park Center's in the class kind of by themselves and a lot of other really good teams, but behind them. You know, you, you think over the years of some of the dominant teams, you know, Eden Prairie had a, a run a couple years ago where they were a great shooting team. But when you get to the state tournament, you're at the Target Center. Sometimes it can be hard to shoot there. You look at a team like Park Center and, and, and the Sasio team too, is that defense can travel anywhere. Whether you shoot well, whether you're dribbling well, whether you make your free throws, if you can defend like this, you always have a shot to win. Tough shot for Carrington, wouldn't go. Spencer got a hand on it, but Osseo ends up with the basketball, and the Moria has it into the front court. Gives it up, one dribble, and then back out on the pass. By Smith, and then out of bounds off Trey Smith. And basketball to Park Center. Yeah, I like what Asu is doing here, picking up full court, knowing they probably got to try to steal a couple extra possessions to get back into this game. Spencer, oh, picks up his dribble and gives it to Braden Carrington. I don't know if they want the big man dribbling down <laughs> court. Possession look, after possession, but he got it down there. It did look like he might have switched his pivot foot there. Not, not good. Rebound on the weak side by Ware. Missed the shot. Ball tipped. Oh. Out of bounds of the Osseo basketball. Evanston Avery, number 23, in for Park Center. In the mix there under the basket. And time just running out for Osseo. I don't know if they have enough possessions to erase this against a, a good Park Center team down 15. Memoria oh. missed on the shot, rebounded by Spencer. Here comes Torbor, releases the pass. Not good. Torbor following up. A lot of, a lot of contact. Traffic, a lot yeah. of contact, but no foul. We still off Park Center basketball. Torbor went down hard, but no foul call. Well, you just love, you love the effort on both sides. Just not letting anything easy challenge in every shot. Well, nice play by Torbor there. Unselfish play and then goes up and attacks the rebound. And off the inbound, that is up and in. And a foul this time is goal. Torbor back to the line. Just a strong play, an easy play. Just looking at how the defender was 
playing him underneath out of bounds, throw it up, and he just goes up strong, takes the contact, and able to finish. I'll tell you, I always think a sign of your aggressiveness is how many trips to the free throw line do you have? And he certainly been lived at the free throw line tonight. Misses on the end one. But a good game for Leo Torber now with 16 points. Hega fouled by Spencer from behind. The second foul on James Spencer. That's the 14 foul on Park Center. No, they, they do a nice job of playing physical and hard without falling, right? I and mean, that's not easy to do either. That was a great move on the baseline. Barra Hager with his first field goal. Quiet night for him, just four points after a 21-point night against Minnetonka on Tuesday. Well, and he might be the guy, if Osio's ever going to beat Park Center, that, that can help them because he's got that size. Steal by Waits. Well, launch the three, not good. Ball tipped by Barriega. Gets the ball back. Whistle, jump ball. And you can see when he wants it, he can go get it. He's got great feet. And great hands for a guy six foot nine. There's great hands, active hands by Waits. This is always tough too when you're going full speed and then to just pull up into that three. That would have maybe got the crowd a little bit back into it for Osio, but great hustle by both sides. They're going after it. It's early in the Northwest Suburban Conference season as far as conference games. These teams in a five-way tie for first place. Spring Lake Park and Tutino Grace playing tonight. Maple Grove also 2-0 and in conference games. And Armstrong and Andover right behind them at 2-1. and Well, you look at Park Center and Tutino, maybe, maybe the two best teams. A lot of people think Tutino Grace may be the most talented team in the, in the state. So good matchups there. Champlin Park. Winless this year. Yeah, they had a lot of turnover from last year. A new head coach, but not used to not seeing that. Are you? No. Zero and six. And same with football this year too. Yeah. Just, just kind of a rough year for, for the Rebels, who you know usually just solid in everything. Great play. Carrington tried to get the clean block, but it's called for the foul. Uh -huh. Carrington's like, ah, right. that was all ball. Yeah, Let's see it again. That's a, that's a bad call. Great play by Osio. I love the play design. Able to create that, but. Waits off the pass from Memorial, goes to the line for two and hits the first. Nine points now for the 6 1 senior, Tyrese Waits. Second round is so good. 239, 523 to go. Ben Baker into the front court to Carrington. Carrington step back two. Long off the iron. Loose ball. Osio's got it. They've got numbers. Two on one. Waits to Amorio. Long oh, nice pass. Back into the hands. Barhega scores. I love how Amorio stayed with it that time. Instead of watching it go out of bounds, grabbed it quick and then knew exactly where his teammate was. Whistle. Got a foul on Osio. Swanson was chasing down Pennebaker. He's getting a whistle for the foul here. Great There's pass right last there. Basket. Kind of loses it, but look at him stay with it. Gets his head up right away and finds a big fellow who's able to finish quickly. You love the fight by Osio, right? It, it, lead was getting pretty big there, and they just keep chipping away slowly at it, and they cut it down to 11. A foul on Swanson was his first, but it was the 19th foul on Osio. Pennebaker to the line for the one and one, and he hits the first. There's two trips to the line for the senior, and he makes them both. Back to a 13 point lead with under five minutes to play. Waits with Torbor in front of him. Pulls up for the three. Back iron not good. Carrington rebounds. And no reason to hurry the possessions yep. now for Park Center, right? 
Well, and smart. Take time off the clock and also maybe force Osio to follow you. They'll be in the double bonus the rest of the way. Carrington will back it out. On Amoria. They will release the pass to Ware. Another foul on Swanson. And then Ware now on the double bonus. Let's do two. JJ, we're trying to get his first points of the night. Well, he's, in, he's you know, similar to kind of to, to James Spencer. Doesn't necessarily show up a ton in the stats, averaging just under six points, but six foot six, great length, strength, plays great defense, rebounds, kind of does some of the dirty work as well for him. I and mean, you got to have that type of player to be a championship caliber team. So they, they just got a great mix of, of what they need, what a good team needs to be really dominant. Missed them both, but they get the offensive rebound. Spencer gets it to wear, and then back out to Pennebaker, and finally into the hands of Braden Carrington. Carrington almost a steal by Waits. Carrington gets a back knock away by Waits again. <laughs> nice defense by the Osseo senior, huh? These hands are just quick, aren't they? Everywhere. It's like you get by one defender, you think you're safe, and there's another set of hands Same flying. Guy. Yeah. 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 Twice. Didn't get the turnover though, and still Park Center basketball. Here's Spencer on the block. Trying right, to get it off for where that was a tough pass and intercepted by Dukowitz. Well, Dukowitz did a good job of just stepping up, anticipating where that was going. Moria letting the three go. Missed it out of bounds. Comes up short. Good Osseo team. You wonder yep. what they would be like if Josh Ola Joseph had yep. stayed here this yeah. year instead of yep. going to play prep basketball his senior year out of uh, out in California. He's uh, going to be a gopher next year. Oh, oh look at the pass and a dunk by Pennebaker. Yeah, kind of a broken play there, and the Pennebaker cuts right to the basket, got a great pass, and again showing off that 6'5. He's athletic as well, gets another dunk. Torber. Here's Spencer alone. Back to back dunks. It's like the backyard battle at the Jacobson household right now. Spencer comes up limping again. Remember he had went out earlier and it's gonna come out again well, here. Let's get the massage, massage drill out there. Well, look at these last yeah. two baskets for Park Center. Again, kind of a broken play, great pass and then uh, how about the finish by Cody Pennebaker? He's, how about James Spencer's like, all right, I'll show you what I can do too. Oh, and then he's yeah. like, oh, that, use, was the, that was too much. Use that calf muscle to, to elevate above the rim and there's the, the cramp coming in right afterwards. You know, Pennebaker, we talked about him a couple of times in his notes to us, Coach Ware mentioned it. He's unsigned, but receiving division, division one, one interest yeah. and you can see why he he's uh you know that good length at six five he plays under control doesn't try to do anything too much he just can do everything well he's seen him knock down some threes we've seen him defensively out in transition and kind of kind of the fits the mold of every player right now for park center a little a little bit of everything carrington 24 points torber 16 and pennebaker 14. For PC, who trailed again much of the first half and be joining us late. Ansio led a, probably 15 of the first 18 minutes of play, but it's been all Pirates here in the second half. Shot up and a foul about, and the shot by Isaiah Johnson. How about this, John? Those three players you just mentioned have 54 of the 58 points for Park Center. So you got a threesome like that that can put up you know, 50 plus points, especially as a team when you're only giving up 40 something points, you're, you're going to be in pretty good shape most nights. Isaiah Johnson, a couple of baskets in the second half, has six points in the game. Forty-three. 
Johnson now with eight points for Osio. Second ball. I think I think what Coach Ware and, and what Braden, what they're saying is, I usually the referee closest to the ball has the count there. Uh, good defense that time by Osio, just applying that pressure and staying on it, not fighting. You know, that's one thing Coach Tyson's teams, they're not going to give up. They're not going to stop playing with great effort, no matter what the score is and how much time is left. Johnson, he's fouled on the drive, looks by, by Weir. I'll tell you, Isaiah Johnson at 6'5", only a sophomore. You can see how explosive and talented he is. Now they're going to pick up. The Weir will pick up the foul. Yeah. Free throw up and good on the one and one for Verhaga. One more coming for the big man. Got them both. Oh, now it's you chipping away, but again, not much time and still a lot of points to go. Back into the hands of Braden Carrington. 24 points tonight here for Park Center. Drives to the basket, tough shot there, rebounded by Barheaga. Lead oh, pass ahead, yeah. too high over Dukowicz's head. Well, had the right idea, yeah. just it's hard to, when you're going full speed like that. J.J. <laughs> Ware double team in the backcourt, steal. Osio forcing the turnover in the basket by Tyrese Waits. Now Pennebaker bring it up against Isaiah Johnson. Ball knocks away by Osio, still Park Center basketball. I love how active right now Osio is defensively, getting hands on a lot of balls, tipping them, and, and playing the passing lanes. You like the aggressiveness. Evanston Avery in, replacing J.J. Ware. Here's Torber back out. Penna Baker and let's work some more clock here. Penna Baker then will attack. Oh. Screw oh. shot up and in. <laughs> that was a tough look. It looked like he got the ball knocked, was going to drop it, somehow able to regain it and get it up with the spin. Now the turnover. Torber gets fouled. I was going to say, he hasn't been to the free throw line in a while. Right. He was due. <laughs> Now yeah, watch this finish by just an unbelievable finish by Pennebaker here. He's, look at him almost lose that ball, able to gather on his fingertips and scoop it up there. He's smooth. I like his game a lot. Second half, six out of eight from the free throw line from Leo Torber. And now 17 points. So, you know, John, if you're if you're playing Park Center, who would what do you try to take away? You know, oh, I don't know. It's a it's a hard offense to try to slow down. And I, I I think the best thing you can do is maybe you play zone and try to force them to make contested threes. But if they're shooting the ball well, then they're just so quick and explosive and have great balance too. Yeah, it's hard to take away all of that backcourt, all three of those guys, right? Yeah. Torberg. Carrington and uh, Pennebaker. Under a minute to play here. Park Center is going to get their eighth win of the season. A block, Carrington foul, and go to the line and shoot two. Yeah, nice little hesitation there. You kind of bring your dribble up, the defender relaxes, and then he attacks the baseline. And knowing with that length, if he shields the defender with his body, he'll be able to either score or get fouled almost every time. Braden Carrington rattles in the free throw for his 25th point tonight. 17 have come here in the second half. Yeah. 
At them both. Under 40 seconds to go. Baseline drive and the flush for Isaiah Johnson. Nice feed from Bernardo Boria. Yeah, nice rip through. And like I said, only a sophomore. He's going to be a heck of a player as he gets more and more experience. So athletic and tough. Corbar trying to throw one more down. He opened the game with a dunk, trying to close it, but couldn't finish there. Weights not good. Park center, and that'll be it. Well, I know I've said some other dunks look like John Jacobs, and that one actually did yeah, look that one, that one was a little more, bit like that John Jacobs. That was absolutely <laughs> one of mine. <laughs> On an eight-foot rim, still missing. So Park Center gets the win, tested certainly in that first half, but a strong close to the first half, and they finish Osseo off in the second half and win it by a score of 64 to 49. Their eighth win of the season are now 3-0 in Northwest Suburban Conference play. Osseo dropping to 6-4 and four and 2-1 and one in the Northwest Suburban Conference. Ryan Iverson making his way out of the floor. He's trying to grab a, one of the Pirates players here before they get to the locker room. So we'll hang on here. Again, these teams will play again at Park Center on February 7th. A lot of good players in this game for the Pirates. Ryan Iverson, ready to talk with one of them right now. Cody Pennebaker, got a big second half for Park Center scoring the basketball. Had 13 of his 18 points after halftime. Braden Carrington led all scores with 26. Leo Torber in the big second half. It was just a great effort and a controlled effort by Park Center. Never any panic in them and then just uh, kind of took things over in the second half to get the 15-point win. All right, let's go to Ryan now. Standing by with Cody. Well, I'm here with uh, Cody Pennebaker. Cody, what a fun atmosphere tonight. Rivalry game. Yeah. What did it feel like to play in it? Um, you know, coming from my old school, we didn't have really a rivalry like this. So, you know, it was really different, but I really liked it. I'll tell you, all broadcast long, I talked about you. I just, I called you the big smooth. Everything was just smooth, right? Kind of no weaknesses. I mean, describe a little bit what you think of your game. Um, you know, I think I really get to the rim well. Um, I play good on defense, and I can knock down shots. Yeah. Well, you know, Brayden Carrington going to the Gophers gets a lot of attention. Yeah. I, I said it again during the broadcast. I think you're going to be the X factor. When you can shoot the ball like that, score like that, mm -hmm. defend like that as well, mm -hmm. you guys become a really, really tough team to, to defend. Yeah, for sure. And you know we have Leo. Leo's high flyer. He can, he can get to the rim really well. He can shoot a little bit. Ayuba. We all we all can really do it. You guys defend so well in practice. You ever go against each other, ones versus ones? And if so, who wins that game, offense or defense? Um, yeah, we usually just do varsity versus JV. You know, we usually win. That's it. not fair. You got to mix it up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, we had uh, the college guys come in. No, that was a test, but we still won a few games. So. so you guys eight no number one in the state. What's the, what's the goal? What's the limit for this team this year? Uh, win state. That's the limit, yeah. Uh, how about you, college-wise? What are you looking at? Who are you interested in? Who are you hearing from? I have offers from Drake and TCU. But, you know, I'll wait until the end of the season to see if I get a few more looks. Awesome. Well, congratulations. A lot of fun to watch. Thank Keep you. up the great work. Thank you. Appreciate right. it. You bet, buddy. Back to you, John. All right. Thanks very much, Cody Pennebaker and Park Center with a strong second half pull away and defeat Osseo by a score of 64 249 for their eighth win of the season. That does it for our telecast tonight. Hope you've enjoyed a good atmosphere tonight at Osseo. It's the Pirates over the Orioles. And Brian Iverson and all of our crew, I'm John Jacobson. Thanks so much for watching CCX Sports.